Here we will check the approach to the network architectures for deep reinforcement learning that decouples Q values in a deep Q network into two summons, a state value and advantage of actions, allowing fast and more reliable learning. The dueling network approach is an improvement over the deep Q networks. Thus, the first part of the video will focus on the basics of deep Q networks, and the second part will highlight how the dueling network approach contributes to fast and more reliable learning. Later, these approaches have been re-examined in the Rainbow article, which has a released code implementation. Uh, let's start with a visual example, which will help to understand the problem and the proposed solution. On the left side you see the Atari game C-Quest, and on the right side you see bars representing a deep Q network output array of Q values. These are produced by the network that processed the gameplay screenshots from the left side. In this game, the agent controls the yellow submarine by executing one of eight possible actions at each time step. Possible actions are no operation, which means to do nothing, fire, move up, right, left, down, upright, up left, and so on. The agent executes the action with the highest Q value, highlighted by the red bar. For the currently observed state, the highest Q value corresponds to the action move up. Hence, the agent moves up. Now, the highest Q value corresponds to the compound action upright fire, and the agent moves upright and fires. Q value of a state action pair represents an expected, discounted, accumulated future reward. In other words, the Q value shows how rewarding it will be in some near future while executing this action in the given state. Since the agent is optimizing its behavior to get as much reward as possible, it selects the action with the highest Q value. The animated curves on the right side show the range of minimum and maximum Q values for the last 50 time steps. Hereby we can observe an important regularity, which reveals the essence of the dueling network approach. That is, the differences between Q values for a given state are often very small relative to the amplitude of Q. Therefore, it may be beneficial for training to split the neural network output array of Q values into a summation of the mean over these Q values and an array of differences, showing how each Q value is higher or lower than that mean Q value. On the left side, you see dueling network output for the state value and advantages for each action. And on the right side, you see the resulting Q values according to this equation. This array of differences we can call advantages of actions. The advantage function measures how much an action is better than other actions in a given state. The mean of all Q values in the given state is approximately equal to the estimate of the state function V. Please note the different zero point positions in the advantage and state value plots. So, before we move to the description of how the dueling network architecture contributes to a fast and more reliable learning with a deep Q network, let's quickly walk through the classical implementation of the single stream deep Q network and compare it to the dueling network architecture. In the forward step of the deep Q network, the last four sequentially observed frames are grayscaled and resized to 84 by 84 pixel arrays and then packed into a three-dimensional 84 by 84 by 4 matrix. This matrix represents the current state of the environment and serves as an input to the neural network. It is processed by a sequence of convolutional layers, resulting in a sequence of two fully connected layers with an output of Q values. These bars schematically represent the output values of the neural network, and the red bar highlights the highest one. For each state observation, the agent selects the action with the highest Q value. In this example, the dueling architecture has the same convolutional layers as the single stream network, but later it consists of two streams that represent the value and advantage functions, while sharing a common convolutional feature learning module. The value stream has a single output neuron, whereas the advantage stream 
has a number of output neurons equal to the number of actions available to the agent. The two streams are combined via a special aggregating layer to produce an estimate of the state action value function Q. In this aggregating layer, the state value is summed up with every advantage value minus the mean of the advantage values, which produces Q values for state observation. The forward step of the dual network architecture doesn't provide any explicit benefit in comparison to the single stream deep Q network if we assume that they both represent the optimal Q function. The benefit of the dual network architecture reveals itself during training. The reason is that Q learning with deep Q networks is based on the temporal difference error. That means that we know how much only one of the output Q values should be changed because we don't know how much reward the agent can get while performing other actions in the given state. Therefore, only one output neuron is contributing to backpropagation per training sample. As the DeepQ network architecture has n output neurons for n different actions which an agent can perform in an environment, with the increasing number of actions, the training of the neural network will become more sparse and biased in the last layers. The separation into two streams of state value and the advantage values for each action allows learning of the state value function efficiently with every update of the Q values. And the separate advantage stream makes the neural network robust to reordinance of actions with the highest Q value due to small amounts of noise in the neural network updates. The mean of advantage values term plays a type of regularization role to keep the output values of the advantage stream around zero. The mean is applied to the output values of the advantage stream for each time step. So, to conclude, in the Rainbow article, authors compared several improvements to the DeepQ network algorithm and demonstrated that the performance of the dual network architecture, shown by the green curve, gets a higher score and exhibits faster learning in Atari games than the classic single-stream DeepQ network, shown here by the gray curve.